let's go to our draw phase and welcome to episode 371 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering or if you just listen to the upkeep or I guess both. Yeah. It, any or all of the above. Yeah. Is I- absolutely acceptable. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, we are going to talk about Pioneer. Yes. And people who win at Pioneer. Yes. Even if it's their first time ever playing the format. Wow. What an accomplishment that must be for them. Yeah, I agree. Really, really. They should be very proud. Plus, we're going to talk about what even does this qualification system mean? Yeah, there's been a lot of people um, like with questions online, like this is so complicated. There's the paper trail. (laughs) Yes. There's the arena trail. There's the MPL. There's the rivals. There's a gauntlet thing happening. How can I keep this straight in my head? Just like Watergate, how can you follow the paper trail to successfully, you know, depresidentialize Richard Nixon? I think that is the official term. (laughs) Depresidentialize. That is for sure the official term. I just forgot the word. (laughs) Depresidentialize. That is what it is. And we definitely depresidentialized the crap out of him. Yeah, we really depresidentialized him. Actually, he depresidentialized himself. Yeah, I would agree with that. (laughs) But yeah, what we mean is we're going to like break it all down for you with the help of a very certain special someone who did play Pioneer for the first time this past weekend and qualified for the Players Tour by winning the whole darn thing the first time he'd ever touched any Pioneer cards in his life. Yeah. Which I think is dang impressive. But before we get to meet him, uh, we have some people to thank. That's right. Yes. And we're going to thank them in a very special way because, Megan. Y- what? This month is Patreon Pledge Drive Month. Oh, my goodness. Yay. We are rolling out so many cool new things for Patreon Pledge Drive Month. I love Pledge Drive Month because Same. it helps us connect with our community and hear yes. from you and like thank you and give back to you for being so awesome the rest of the year. Our number one favorite thing that comes with patron pledge drive month yeah is phone calls yes uh we have a google voice number unfortunately fossils with a z is no longer ours so please do not call and leave a message for us at fossils fossils with a z somebody else took it but we do have a new number which we're also very enamored of yes which is 612 dorp 601 (laughs) that's 612 dorp 601 612 d-o-r-p D-O-R-P-601. That's right. So um, if you enjoy the show in any way, shape, or form, please give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. We might even play it on the episode. Yes. We love playing your voicemails on the episode, even if you just want to chat yes. about pizza or you want to chat about like why you listen to the show and why other people should support the show. Leave us a me- message yeah. at 612 DORP 601 Yes, and let us know. And of course, with Patron Pledge Drive Month comes a very special Pledge Drive Month reward. Yay, special reward. And we had really hoped to have them here to show to you. Yes. But unfortunately, um, bec- literally because of coronavirus, we do not yet have them. But we have ordered a special set of Good Luck High Five enamel pins. They're so beautiful, everybody. Yes. And if you're watching the video version, I'll put up a picture of them. Yes. So you can see kind of a rendering of what they would look like. They're in a circle. They have the same beautiful stripe pattern. The rainbow um, background. Yeah, the rainbow background. And they say GLHF on them. GLH5. Oh, that's right. GLH5 now. Yeah. Because it's um, just cooler. Because it's cooler. So we're, yeah, we're super, super excited about them. So how do you get a GLH5 special in enamel coronavirus um, <laughs> pin, Megan? Well, I feel like maybe we shouldn't call them that if we want well, people you know to get oh, them. That's fair. That's fair. I'll okay. strike that part. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, so you can either start pledging to our patreon at five dollars a month or more or you can increase your current pledge by at least five dollars yeah if you are already at the top tier we're just gonna send you one (laughs) don't worry about it (laughs) you're really cool so you get one um but yeah so anyone who joins at squirrel level which comes with a whole bunch of sweet benefits Mm -hmm. including access to our access to our discord and a good luck high five sticker and that kind of stuff uh you'll also receive a pin if it happens during the month of march yes so if you've been thinking about it go do it right now but also you don't get one if you're just full 
full of bananas and you delete your pledge after you pledge. Yes. Because we know we are not done. We're watching. <laughs> We're watching. We're watching you. So we'll keep you honest. But yeah, happy Patreon Pledge Drive Month, everybody. Please uh, give our phone number a call, 612 DORP 601, and let us know why you listen to Good Luck High yeah. Five. And uh, become a new patron this month. We want to get a whole, you know, happy family happening in March or increase your pledge by five bucks to get this super cool yes. uh, enamel pin. We look forward to hearing from all you dorps. <laughs> Uh, some dorps we love are also Card Kingdom. Yes. You can go to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF and buy anything you want for your magical life. Um, they've got excellent shipping, best customer service. Yes. And now the article on their blog, which is great, about uh, hexproof decks, boggles decks, if you will, that I contributed to is live. You can go read about that. Yeah. So it's about, you know, how do you build a boggles deck in standard? How is a What's a boggles deck in legacy look like? Yeah. Don't worry. We've got lists for you. We've got a modern list, a standard list, a legacy list. Wow. I was really worried, but now I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Boggles <laughs> in every format all the time available wow. on the Card Kingdom blog. Yeah. And that's just one of the many awesome features that they offer. You can also say good luck, have sticker or have token in your order and they will send you a good luck high five sticker or token. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, And with that said, let's move on to the episode and happy Patreon pledge drive, everyone. Yeah, come join our family of dorps. (laughs) Hey everybody, it's time to welcome a very special guest onto the show to talk pioneer and qualifying for all sorts of high level magic events. It's amateur pro Greg. Hi, Megan and Maria. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's uh, I'm doing great. I'm I'm really excited um, because as you just alluded to, I, uh, I won a PTQ this weekend, Yay! which was really awesome. It's been a little while since I've been on the Pro Tour or the Mythic Championships or the Players Tour, um, <laughs> and so I'm really excited to be back, yeah. going to scenic Charlotte, North Carolina, Ooh. to play in a, a Magic tournament in a couple months. Yeah, Very that's exciting. so awesome, yeah. Greg. Greg is uh, our resident amateur pro who, mm-hmm. you know, the, he, you live up to your title. Like, you're an yeah. amateur, but you're also, you're going back yeah, to the I was, or, I was worried that, you know, since it's been a while, maybe I'd lose my amateur pro status with the podcast. Have no. you just be an amateur amateur or maybe a pro amateur? <laughs> um, but, you know, now Don't I worry. Think, yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can keep it. So, Still Greg, amateur pro. you played Pioneer this weekend. I did play Pioneer PTQ. this weekend at the PTQ. Um, honestly, uh, it was my first time ever touching the pioneer format wow that is impressive i had never played pioneer before uh and i went and i played a a mono white devotion deck which i copied from one of the scg lists um and i love planes they're my favorite cards in magic this deck was (laughs) hold up hold up hold up is planes literally your favorite card in magic well it's the best card in magic i don't know if it's my favorite card in magic but planes is definitely the strongest card in magic. wow craig that is like the most forest Hot mountain take. swamp then like eight white cards then island is Ooh, wow. i agree <laughs> that's like the most scalding hot take in magic right now <laughs> megan is burned right now yeah. well, third degree over there i uh, just won a tournament playing only white cards i mean so. fair enough great yeah. you, you know. also top eight at a grand prix a few years ago uh, playing only white cards yeah oh, uh, that was i guess blue it was white, blue white. oh that was blue white but these like so okay so you talked about how like what what is cool about pioneer and i think this is what's most exciting about pioneer Mm -hmm. is that if you've been playing standard for a couple years maybe like three or four years maybe even less a lot of your favorite cards from standard are back and so what i loved about this mono white deck is that over the last four years while i've been playing standard i've played a lot of white decks i've played blue white monument green white tokens mono white aggro just like various iterations of white decks and this kind of was the best of all of those worlds it just had pieces (laughs) of all of these decks that i loved from the last four years and just like jammed together can you describe what the deck does in case people aren't familiar with it so mono white devotion is a pioneer deck um, that kind of has two angles of attack so one angle attack is the Heliod Sun Crowned and Walking Ballista Infinite Combo. Um, if you have these two cards together and the setup is right, you can deal infinite damage to your opponent. Yeah. Um, and so one way you win is with this. And when people look at the deck, they think that this is the main way to win, that it's a combo deck. But honestly, it's not. You don't really have any ways to like dig for your combo or find it. Um, in my whole tournament, so I guess I won six seven, eight, nine matches, I only won four total games with the combo. Wow, Um, that's not many. Yeah, that's that's not many. That's like 20%-ish. And the rest, you just win. You're a good white mid-range deck. 
Um, you have an aggro element. I was playing some Benelish Marshals, which pump all your creatures, so you just get a lot of creatures and go wide, like a good white aggressive deck. And you have some mid-range elements. You have some Gideon Planeswalkers um, and some other cards that kind of give you a little bit of, like, two-for-one. Things like Thraben Inspector, things like um, Anafenza Kintry Spirit to pump your creatures, and just lots of ways to, like, get little creatures out and make them bigger. Okay, wow. so, so right up your alley. Right, oh my god. This deck, <laughs> I love it. So I don't even, my favorite fact about this deck is that I don't really keep many magic cards anymore. I've gotten really good about like donating and selling all my cards. I only keep like one box of cards that I really love from over the years. And I owned almost this entire deck. Oh. From just like cards that I refused to sell because I loved them so much. And I just got to play all of them this weekend. I had such a good time. So anyway, yeah. I, I, I think Pioneer is just great. It's <laughs> like the, the decks like aren't they're a little degenerate and unfair, but like not that degenerate and unfair. And if there's something you really want to do, you can you can probably do it. So you weren't like overwhelmed by Demure Inverter or Lotus no, Breach? No, I actually that kind of stuff? didn't play either of those decks once. Um, Whoa! Because even though they are the two most popular decks in Pioneer, it's a really open meta game. I played a lot of weird decks. I played against a Jeskai Fires version with a bunch of Planeswalkers. I played against a, a Hardened Scales wa um, Winding Constrictor deck with a cool. bunch of counters. I played against like Red White Aggro Knights, which were just like decks I didn't know exist. But these yeah. are like old standard archetypes that people could upgrade for Pioneer and decks that people really liked playing and they brought to Pioneer. And even that last one, the Red White Knights, is mostly Throne of Eldraine cards. Like, there were yeah. new cards that made up this deck. And so, you know, if I was talking about standard nostalgia and, and you're a newer player, there's also <laughs> current standard nostalgia in Pioneer. Where you can just <laughs> play with the standard current cards you love. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, you know, then you play standard one day and then the next day you're feeling really nostalgic for that. And then you go play Pioneer. <laughs> and then you go play Pioneer. Yeah, I exactly. understand. I am nostalgic for that peanut butter sandwich I had for breakfast. Oh, Let absolutely. me tell you about oh, that right now. A I'm whole nostalgic. peanut butter sandwich. For when I was asleep this morning. Well, well, you know, I put it in the toaster, so it's like, it's that's like peanut butter toast. Peanat butter toast. But I put the two pieces of bread together. You're a monster. And I eat it like a sandwich. That is what that <laughs> because is. it's easier to transport to wherever I'm eating around the house in a sandwich form than it is in two pieces of toast form. Oh, you know what I I'm mean, saying? I guess it does. Is this acceptable as a breakfast? Have you ever it's heard fine. of <clears throat> jelly? <laughs> I mean, great question. Yeah, but Same then question. I'm just full on eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for breakfast. Well, yeah, that's but, nothing that's wrong great. with that. That's that's one so ingredient more. Do one ingredient no, more than the don't. peanut butter sandwich that you ate. Not, lots of people, quote unquote, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwich for breakfast. What world do you live in, Greg? How many fewer people do you think are eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> than are eating peanut butter sandwiches? I don't know, but I feel like the the birth must be pretty wide, right? No. No. no, I feel like peanut butter jelly sandwiches are one of the most like popular food for breakfast uh, for at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't have any jelly to answer your question. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's what, that's what we were really getting at. <laughs> but I just... will eat it with cheese. So peanut butter and cheese. No, but it's like oh, super right. sharp what? cheddar no. cheese. Stop. Yeah. That's so much worse. Immediately stop. <laughs> stop talking. I can't. I can't handle that if one. If you eat any of these things for breakfast, please tweet at GLHF Magic with the hashtag peanut butter morning. <laughs> How do you feel about peanut butter bagels? Like like bagel, bagel, toast it, put peanut butter. Yes, on that's it. how I would prefer to eat my bagel. Okay. That's too much consistency for me. Mm, okay. Like it's like it's so like a bagel is so dense and then peanut butter is so dense. It's really hard to I'll tell to you eat. what's dense. Yes. <laughs> Wow. You trying to burn me right now? I'm trying to burn you harder than when Greg said Island is the worst card in uh, So, Greg, going back to yeah. your PTQ, yeah. were there any, like, rounds or matches where you were, like, really, like, back against a wall having to fight your way out? So I'm um, in a group chat with some uh, friends of mine who play Magic, um, mm -hmm. and... Um, Sam Eilenfeld, fellow pirate boy and friend of the podcast, and was there. forever rookie of and the year. And forever rookie yes. of the year. Last rookie of the year Last ever. Last rookie of the year ever, Sam Eilenfeld was there. And he was um, live messaging the Facebook group about the game. Um, and like, <laughs> like, like, like turn by turn updates. And I went back after the tournament and I read this whole thread to see what it was. And almost every single match started with Greg's losing. It's a huge uphill battle. 
And then like five minutes later, he'd be like, Greg won that game. And everyone <laughs> in the message would be like, what happened? Um, well, so, what did happen? Yeah. yeah. So here's my favorite one. So I was playing Mono Green Devotion. Okay. Yeah, that's um, a known deck. It's a known deck. Um, and I, my Mono White deck had one copy of the card Tomic Distinguished Advocus. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. flyer. Tomic's from War of the Spark. It's a two mana, two, three flyer. Um, white, white, so it's good for devotion. Um, and it has this text about, like, lands can't be the target of spells or abilities. Yeah. And it's in there to stop the Underworld Breach deck. But I, I drew this card against Mono Green, and I didn't even think about it, and I just played it. And I was like, this is great. All their mm -hmm. creatures are on the ground. I can attack them through the air. And it just shut off their entire strategy because they had Nyssa, who shakes the world, which targets <laughs> lands. They had um, Voyaging Satyr, which untaps lands, targeting them. And they had this, like, Wolf Willow Haven card oh, from the new set. Yeah. Yeah. And they just had this handful of cards that all targeted lands, none of which did. And you're like, I don't wow. care. And so this, like, little Tomic that I didn't even think about was just sitting on the battlefield, and suddenly my opponent went from an incredibly dominant board position to just unable to do anything. Oh, that's so wow. cool. That's oh. wild. I didn't even... It's, <laughs> Matt was so uh, Matt Sikip Johnson, other fellow pirate boy in front of the podcast, yeah. um, was also sitting there and he knew about this interaction and he was watching me. And apparently he was just like in agony because I Cause waited like see five it. turns to um, play my Tomic. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and, and I was just doing other things. Oh, and I he see. was like, no, but I finally figured it out. And uh, all right. Also, I had one game against Matt actually in the top four where um, Matt had completely stabilized, and all I had on the board was he uh, Heliod the God. But just if I top-decked Walking Ballista, I would win the game with the infinite combo. And uh, the turn before Matt killed me, I just draw my top no card, way. and it's a Walking Ballista. Wow. And Holy win cats. the game. So. All right, what was Matt on? Matt was on Sultai Delirium. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we so know that game. Yeah, so it uses... That game, uh, <laughs> we know that deck. <laughs> it uses um, Uro <laughs> of Titan's Wrath, from Theros Titan of Beyond Nature's Wrath. Sorry, t thank How you. How dare you. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Um, as a value engine and with a lot of self-mill delirium stuff, you can get it back. Um, another really cool combination of like using Uro to upgrade this old archetype from Shadows yeah. over Innistrad block and really bringing it to the next level. Yeah, that's super so. cool. So and what was... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Is your question related? I was going to ask what your finals match was against. Oh, yeah. My finals match was this uh, mono green devotion oh, okay. deck that I was just talking about. Okay. Where nice. I, so I won exciting. a game with Tomic, and then I won a, uh, another exciting game later. So oh. you're headed now to the Players Tour Americas. Yes. Yeah, so um, so maybe we should talk a bit about how the yes. next player tours are going to work. Before we do, though, I want to ask one question. Yes. Yeah. How on earth do you feel about going into this pioneer PTQ and not playing a game ever and then winning the whole thing? Do you it's, feel guilty? <laughs> do I, I don't feel Great question. guilty. I, I do feel guilty for beating my friend Matt, especially with top decking the walking yeah, ballista. That's I like drew it and I was like, I'm so sorry. And I just showed it to him and he just picked up his cards. Uh, and it was his birthday. You monster. I, he didn't, it he was didn't literally his it. birthday. Everybody. He didn't tell me until afterwards that it was his birthday. <laughs> and I, I'm a bad friend. I didn't know it was his birthday. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Like literally uh, his birthday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so yes. So yeah, I, I, it's honestly, it's super surreal. I'm pretty convinced I'm going to like wake up tomorrow and like, It'll have never happened. Oh, that's uh, so cute. <laughs> You'll have but dreamed yeah. it. But honestly, like, I don't know. I think part of the reason is that like, just like I've played this type of deck so much in standard that like even though I had no practice with this specific variant, like kind of this is my wheelhouse. And so... And that's you know, a great it, message too going into Pioneers. Yeah. You were not necessarily familiar with all of the decks in the format mm -hmm. or even how Yeah, your deck. but I mean, and the metagame was so wide open that even people who were familiar with all the decks in the format were facing surprises almost sure, every yeah. round. You know, sure you know Demir Inverter really well, but there are just so many de different decks that people brought. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I think um Oh, uh, man, I was going to say something else insightful. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, we mentioned you're going to Players Tour Americas in Charlotte yep. coming up. So let's talk a little bit about now how this system works because it is very complicated. Yeah. There's yes. a lot of stuff in there. I have a first question Go to kick it. it off. Yes. 
how did you qualify for this PTQ slash did you have to slash how? Great question. Excellent question. So there are a couple of main ways to make it to the players tour. And let's start here. But what's okay. the players so, tour? So, I feel like we have to define that. Ooh, great. Too. Let's start with what's the players tour. So the players tour is the natural continuation of what two years ago were called pro tours. And one year ago were called mythic championships. Now it's called the players tour. How it works is three to four times a year, there's a series of player tours, one in the Americas, one in Asia Pacific, and one in Europe. So this time, there's one in Charlotte, North Carolina, there's one in Copenhagen, Denmark, and there's one uh, in Japan. I don't know the exact city it's in. Um, and then after those three events, there's something called the Players Tour Finals, but we're going we're gonna to hold off on that and come back to Great. it. Great. So there are three players tours. These are very similar to pro tours of old. All right. One has happened. So this is series two. The first series has already happened, except the finals have not happened yet. Yes. So those finals are in Houston in April. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so from what, so I had a lot of um, friends who were at the players tour Americas and they said it had a very similar atmosphere to Pro Tours of old. I would it call it like similar, a oh, combination. Yeah, I was yeah. there. I would call it a combination of Pro Tours plus Grand Prix. Yeah, it was. A, there were more people who played in them just because there were three of them, um, and they they were kind of merging the two invite systems, the old way to qualify and the new way to qualify, which just meant a lot of people were there. I don't know if that will continue for future player tours, but it does seem like. We're going to talk about all the ways you can qualify, and there are a lot of them, so that will get a lot of people to these events. So this is a couple hundred at each regional player's I tour? I think that's mm -hmm. their intention. Yeah. It's like three to 500 people. Okay, cool. So, cool. So um, one way to qualify is how I qualified, which is through a PTQ, which I guess means player tour qualifier, though <laughs> everyone was calling them pro tour qualifiers. Um, so PTQs are open events, so anyone can sign up for them. What? You don't need to register. And most of them happen at Magic Fests. So at Magic Fests, where GPs are held, there are, I think now, like three to five PTQs at each one. Okay. I think one on Friday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Maybe don't quote me on that, but <laughs> between three and five. Um, and, uh, and so there are a lot there. You can just sign up if you don't want to play the main Grand Prix event. Maybe you come do some side drafts and then play one PTQ. And then there are regional ones that just seem to be happening kind of randomly throughout um, throughout your region. You can look online and see if near you there's a local game store hosting a PTQ. This is just how I found this. Um, or, well, Matt found it and told me about it. But. <laughs> how many players were at this? So there were 145 people Holy at this God. PTQ. Whoa! <laughs> Greg, you won a 145-person PTQ? I did win a 145-person PTQ. Wow. I did not realize the magnitude of your accomplishment until now. Wow. Like, obviously, we were very happy for you, <laughs> and we were very proud of you, but I didn't realize there was that many people. That's yep. serious there were business, a man. a lot of people there. It was an eight-round tournament because there were so many people. Wow. Um, and apparently it is required that these tournaments have 128 people or more to run. Okay. Um, Ooh, okay. So, so 148 was actually kind of small for a PTQ. Um, wow. And the ones at Magic Fests definitely have that Those number are, of yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and only the winner gets an invite to the Players Tour. But there are a lot of them happening between Magic Fests and just random ones at local game stores. So this is kind of like the PTQ system of old. Yes. This is very similar to the PTQ system of old, but there are just more happening because of how many there are at Magic Fests. Great. We loved going to PTQs back in the day. Yes. I, I mean, I had a, such a fun time. Yeah. yeah. I believe I, I met you both. At that's, a PTQ. that's true. Yeah. 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 I accidentally introduced myself as Maria. <laughs> that was to Sam, actually. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. It happens but to it, the best it of us. It really happened. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It just completely on accident. <laughs> okay, so we, we got to keep going because there's oh, a yeah. lot to talk Sorry. about. Okay. okay, so that's PTQ. Keep talking. Then there's the second way to qualify is through W, W, N, wait, W, P, N, Qs. So <clears> that's. Uh, premium Wizards Play Network qualifiers. Yes. These are very similar to PTQs. Any premium store will host them. So, for example, we sometimes go to Lodestone Coffee and Games. Shout out to them in Minneapolis. They are hosting a w, uh, WPNQ, um, almost for one for each pro tour. 
Um, okay. And so if you have a premium level store in your area, they'll be hosting these. Only 32 people can play in a WPNQ. And so because of this, stores will have WPNQ qualifiers. WPNQQs. Oh WPNQQs, <laughs> um, which are somewhat reminiscent, I think, of the PPTQs of old. Yes. Yes. So for example, Lodestone, which I'm using because they're the one I know, leading up to their last WPNQ, every Saturday for four weeks, they had a WPNQQ. <laughs> <laughs> where yeah. everyone in the top eight got to go to the okay. WPNQ. So eight people over four tournaments, that's 32 spots. Then at the end of that month, the 32 people fought it out for who would get the one invite. You, it's kind of like a PTQ, but it happens over the course of four weeks. Exactly. It's like a PTQ. It happens over four weeks, and it's like a day two situation. Yeah. So if you top eight the WPNQQ... <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> then you get to play in day two, which is the WPNQ. Do you happen to know if this is at the store's discretion, what formats they hold these in? Um, I actually don't. I know that um, all the WPNQQs weren't the same format. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's did. cool. I think they had two that were modern and two that were pioneer. Okay. Wow. So, and then I think when they did it, the WPNQ was pioneer. So you okay. could have qualified for it playing modern. Which is cool. Yeah, fun. Um, so right. that's so we got PTQs yeah, and PTQs, w- WPNQs, and, and their WPNQQs. Maybe if your store only has thirty-two people interested, they won't do yeah. the QQ level. But that, that's <laughs> probably going to be more interest in those. Oh, okay. So that's two. The third way is through fractional invites from Grand Prix. Oh boy, knuckle so, crack. Yeah. So it used to be that if you top eight at a Grand Prix, you would make it to the Pro Tour. Easy. Um, or you could get like pro points. Let's not go into the old system. The new system is that based on your record at the pro tour, you will Wait, get pro tour. Sorry. Thank you. Based on your record at a grand prix, you might get some amount of fractional invite towards the pro tour, towards the player store. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> at a grand prix, you at might a get a prix, fractional, fractional invite. invite to the players tour. Regionals. Yep. To, to the players tour, like, yeah, the, the first level of players, tour, yeah. not the players tour yeah. finals. For example, if you top eight, I believe you get 50% of an invite, and then it kind of goes down with worth, worse records. If you get 10 or 11 wins, you'll get a small percentage of a players tour attendance. So if you go to a lot of GPs and consistently chain some good to great finishes, you'll get an invite to the players tour for that, and maybe also the next season. Okay. That makes okay. sense. It's right. complicated, yep. but it makes sense. So to recap, we have PTQs, which happen at Magic Fests and sometimes in your region that are big tournaments over 100 people. These tournaments at WPNs, at Wizard uh, Player Wizard Wizard's Play, Play Network, Network premium stores um, that happen once per season with qualifiers, and you can get fractional invites by playing in a lot of GPs. All right. Sweet. Thank you, Greg. that's how you make the players <sighs> tour. All then right. there's the Players Tour Finals, which you can make by doing well at the Players Tour that you go to. Yeah. So the three Great. regional ones feed the finals. Exactly. All right. Wow. Uh, Thank you, Greg. You that know, was amazing. I teach calculus for a living, so I'm used to like <laughs> explaining complicated things. But this was, yeah. this was hard. Yeah. This was uh, And the worst part about it, and no offense to Wizards, but if you Google how to qualify for the Players Tour, the first thing that comes up is an article from over a year ago, and every fact in that article is now out of date. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Whew. that's why I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you yeah. about this, to give people another resource right. that is correct. Yeah, so, you know, uh, listen to this podcast again in a year, and it'll be really funny about how we thought <laughs> yeah, this, this was, was the system. It all yeah. again. I-, I joke, but I think they have, they're intending to keep this system for quite a while. At least we're in kind of a trial period so they're going to see how it works and and go uh and go from there but it, it kind of seems like this is what they want to stick with and that they're happy with yeah okay fabulous yeah a we, cool a cool thing about winning a ptq that i didn't know and no one knew is that um the tournament had a cash prize also and the cash prize was intended to be a travel award um because they oh. don't give you a travel award when you win um when you go to a pro player store anymore 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and so now they make sure that all the PTQs, at least the regional ones, have enough of a cash prize that the winner can go and buy an airplane ticket. Oh, that's great. Because, yeah. Because, you know, so we, we tried to split it up because we were like, let's, how about the person who wins gets the invite, but the person who gets in second maybe gets some of the cash prize. And they said, you can't do that because they're stapled together. Oh. It's meant to be a travel award. Yeah. So. Nice. So you can buy that sick ticket to South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's a w- remarkably well-thought-out road to how it happens. Thank yeah. you, Greg. <laughs> and then there's, like, stuff about getting enough mythic points or players' points. Oh, you can also qualify through Magic Online events, which we didn't even talk about. We don't then need there's to. there's the Arena Pro Tours, we, or, which are called Mythic okay. Invitationals, which we don't need to talk about. No. So, you know, we, those we just, just covered, happen, and you can watch yeah. them when they happen. We just covered the paper one today. Yep. yep. The moral of the story is that if you are interested in trying to qualify for the Players Tour or just playing in a Magic tournament with a little more of a competitive feel, see if there's a PTQ in your area. And if not, see if there's a premium level store that might be holding some WPNQQs. Because honestly, the way that I got to where I am now, as someone who's like occasionally going to Pro Tours, was just by trying out some competitive level events with friends yeah. and making a whole day out of it and going together and all playing and having fun and eventually started getting better and doing well enough to qualify. You that's really, a great message. You, you yeah. really made me want to play a PTQ again because I, I that's yeah. why my favorite way to yeah. play Magic is slightly, slightly competitively. <laughs> slightly competitive, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like that would, that would feed that need. Yeah. And that's, if you're daunted by the format... You can you can just play it. Greg just showed up. Just copy, copy a fun looking deck from the internet. 140 people had more, all had more practice playing the format than you. They certainly didn't have less. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play some Flavor Text Theater, Megan. Yes, yeah. this is the Super Tuesday edition. Yay, happy Super Tuesday, everybody. Yeah, for all of our non-American listeners, um, that means one of the biggest days of primary voting in the United States. Uh, so hopefully lots of our U.S. listeners are heading out to their polls today. Yeah, go out there and vote, everybody. Yeah, um, voting. But we're going to open this 15-card collector Whoa. booster oh. of Theros Beyond Death. Oh. Right? Um, and give you some campaign speeches from the cards <laughs> inside about okay. why you should be voting for them. So everyone get your ballots ready yes. and let us know which of these candidates you want to elect. Tweet at us at GLHF Magic with the hashtag Super Boosty. Super Boosty. <laughs> like Super Tuesday, but Super Boosty. It's boosty. Anyway. <laughs> we'll say it worked. It worked. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to. Oh. Ooh, you got a good one, huh? Yeah, I did. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pick up. Should I pick up a couple? Wow. I'm, I'm going to go with my first pick. All right. Mine is maybe. I mean, I thought we were going to give multiples. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh here's the shiny really? forest. Okay. Also, I love. So these come with the yeah, foil versions of so the good. Nyx lands. And they're like so beautiful. Cool. I All really right. I love them. I've got one. I've got one here. All right. Maria, Does everybody let's, have. Let's hear it. Yeah, I have, have my yours? candidate. All right. Everyone listen up. It's me, your buddy, back from the dead and ready to lead this country. (laughs) I've traversed the underworld, so I know what it's like at the bottom of society, and I'm here to bring you all to the top. And by bring you to the top, I mean specifically drag you all down to hell with me. Wow. Yeah. I, um, it's a dark, it's a dark candidate. Yeah. I'll, I'll be voting for them. Do we have the same card? Who (laughs) is it? Tiramet chosen from oh. dad. Oh. Look, I'm literally chosen. I'm the literal chosen one, and my animation on Arena is very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> These young whippersnappers are coming out <laughs> from the underworld thinking they can change the world. <laughs> but what we really need today is someone with experience, someone who's been there and knows how the system works and understands how bleak it can truly be. <laughs> You say you've been chosen by death. Who do you think chose you <gasps> from death, Timoret? I would like to officially announce I, Erebos the Bleak Hearted, <laughs> am running for this position. Wow. Okay. Foil version of Erebos the Bleak Hearted. I have no oh. chance now, but this mm. card is beautiful. Oh, it's so oh, good. Look at that, everyone. Oh, all right. We Ooh, all chose black cards. They look like <laughs> very, very telling. Uh, are you 
uncertain whether you're more motivated by hating yourself or hating others, <clears throat> I'm the candidate for you. What we're going to do is we're going to take what we have and we're going to pitch it down a pit so that nobody can have it. Mm. We're going to take our people and we're going to throw them at other people and then there won't be people in either scenario because I'm the demon of loathing. (laughs) (laughs) All these candidates so dark. When I deal combat damage to a player, that player sacrifices a creature. I literally did not remember that card. Hi there, everyone. Do you feel like there's too much negativity on this campaign trail? I really feel that too. I feel like there's all this death and demonism that's really taking over Theros today. And so I feel like we need to come together and boost each other up. That's what an election should be about, you guys. And so my name is Glory Bearers, and I'm here to support you all, give you a little bit more toughness, and take out these negative candidates. Vote Glory Bearers. Oh, Greg. Um, also, um, Temple of Enlightenment, and it, not a candidate, but it's one of the borderless oh, ones. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it so pretty? Wow. Anyways. Hey, everyone. You might not know me, my name, my face, or <laughs> heck, even what my abilities are, because no one's ever played with me ever. They haven't even put me in their draft deck. I'm what you would call draft chaff. But because I'm draft chaff, I understand you. And I understand the lowest reaches of any card in any place at any time. I'm here for the cards that end up in the garbage or recycling because people don't even want to look at them because they're just that worthless. Have you ever felt like that? Well, I understand you. And I'm here to say my candidacy will tower above the rest. With Towering Wave Mystic. Oh. Did you all know this was a card? Do you guys remember this card? Yeah, I know that card. Yeah, have the you ever, one, right? Have you ever put this in a deck, Greg? No, never. Uh, I have not. Yep. No. Me yeah, either. No. But <laughs> no shame. Sometimes you it's need a good 2-1 two one. One for 2. 2-1 two yeah. for 2 when it deals damage, target player puts that many cards from the top of the library into the graveyard. Um... Have you ever looked at the ocean and thought, that thing's scary? (laughs) Have you ever been standing by a river and thought, terrifying? Have you ever gazed out across a lake and thought, goodness gracious, protect me from this? Well, don't worry. I'm your candidate, here to make sure that we don't touch the water and the water doesn't touch us. I'm the Nyx-born sea guard, (laughs) and I'll guard the sea from you and you from the sea. (laughs) That is somebody with a very specific one. It's very niche. Yeah. It's a very one, niche issue candidate. candidate. Yeah. I'm a single issue candidate. Are you afraid of the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi there. It's Glory Bringers again, Glory Bears. And I'm thrilled to announce an amazing endorsement that we have just gotten word of in our campaign. Because if you really need, what we really think is that this campaign needs some fresh new ideas. Mm. I'm tired of the old way that this Theros is being run. And so ideas, ideas, ideas. And I am here to train you, to teach you, dare I say, to tutor you in all of these ideas. <laughs> Thank you so much to Idyllic Tutor for sponsoring this campaign. We could Yay. not be here without you. And in fact, we're ready to announce that they are our running mate. This is the Glory Bearers Idyllic Tutor 2020 ticket. Ooh, oh. This is who you're voting for, for all sure, right. Greg. Yeah. Mono white. <laughs> Wolf. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vote Scofos War Leader. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy. No. (laughs) Hey, it's me. I'm a candidate, but I'm not a human. I'm not even any kind of monster. No, I just hang outside your house when it's dark out. If you want a candidate that's not alive, but definitely has a soul, (laughs) consider voting for me. I'll guide your soul and the soul of this community somewhere real special into the underworld. It's me, Soul God Lantern. Vote on Super Tuesday. (laughs) Wow. I'll guide the soul of your community into the underworld (laughs) is a campaign pitch if I ever heard one. (laughs) Hey there, whippersnappers. I'm back. It's Erebos Bleak Hearted again. I'm sad about this Soul God Lantern exiling our graveyards and such. And I've decided... This is a rough announcement. Thank you to everyone who supported me, but it's time for me to drop out of the campaign. Thank you so much. And I would like to officially endorse he that was, I feel like he hasn't gotten enough talking recently with all these new candidates, but Timoret was originally chosen by death 
And here I hey, am, thank Erebos, you. Thank you, to Erebos. support Timoret. You know, I said some pretty bad things about you early in the campaign, and I'd like to stand by each and every one of those things. <laughs> now I sound like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks. Great. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. And remember, get out there and vote. Hey, everybody. Do you know what exists? Ultra Pro. That is so true, Megan. Yes. And something very exciting exists yes. within the Ultra Pro realm. Oh, oh, what? Not only this podcast, of which they are proud sponsors, yes. but also brand spanking new good luck high five play mat oh that's oh. right Yay. ultra pro is continuing their legacy of printing some of the coolest play mats around that's right with dare we say tooting our own horn toot, toot. one of the very coolest which is a brand new style of good luck high five play mat yes if you're watching the video it's up on your screen um yeah. you can see it on our tv behind us as well throughout the episode but yeah it's our beautiful rainbow pattern rainbow chevron pattern with our good luck high five hand-drawn starburst logo oh, and it They're is beautiful beautiful so uh you know if that's up your alley we'll be letting you know in the future how you can maybe get your hands on it yes if you're like i love it but i like magic art also do you know what you can get tons of amazing ultra pro play mats in all kinds of awesome art styles and you know we talked about on the upkeep this week two new uh secret lair drops and mm -hmm. ultra pro is really cool because they'll put Art from the secret layer, the special art on their playmats, deck boxes, yes. and sleeve, which I think is awesome. Ugh. So if you're like, I don't necessarily want the secret layer, but I do love the art, so you can find it on mm -hmm. Ultra Pro products, which is really cool. One of the best ways to express your love and appreciation for magic art, Ultra Pro. <laughs> Well, everybody, that is this show. We are entering our end step cleanup yes. phase. Uh, thank you so much to Amateur Pro Greg for hanging out and talking with us this week. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I always love being here. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. If people want to follow you and per potentially your progress at Players Tour Charlotte later yeah. this year, how can they follow you? I uh, will be posting updates to Twitter during this process. So you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Never Bowley. So that's Never B-O-L-E. Um, you can dig back into some old show notes to find out the origins of that name. <laughs> um, but for now, we'll just leave it at never, N-E-V-E-R-B-O-L-E -E, uh, on Twitter. And you can find me there. Yeah, congratulations awesome. again. Yeah. Thanks so much. Super cool. Really cool. And for giving us that breakdown of paper yeah. qualifications. Yeah. I dare I say this, but if you have questions, you can tweet them at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're really opening and yourself up there, Greg. I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. All right. <laughs> but like... I no promises. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You're trying your best, and that's what what we can ask. Uh, happy Patreon pledge drive a month yes. again, everybody. This is a reminder at the end of the show. We're running this promotion through the end of the month. Yeah, get one of those sweet enamel pins by pledging five dollars or adding five dollars to your pledge yeah and you can find our patreon over on patreon.com slash glhf magic yeah thank you to card kingdom head to card kingdom.com slash glhf use that link to buy anything you want on their website and ask for a token or a sticker in your order and thank you to ultra pro for helping us make these beautiful play mats which will be available in the very near future and send us those voicemails people yes 612 Dorp 601. We really want to hear from you. We promise this is like not a trick. Some people are like, is this real? And we're like, yes, yes it is a hundred percent real. And we'll, we will play your we voicemail play voice on mails. the show. So yeah. we would love to hear from you about why this uh, show brings anything into your life or, you know what, just random, anything you want to talk to us about. Yeah. Thank um, you for being a good luck. High five. Dorp. Dorp. <laughs> Dorps. Oh, Dorp. 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 Dorp.